What's going on guys? It's Boo from Mile High Distilling. We are back with another installment in our Distilling 101 series. Today we're going to be covering aging. Now buckle up here because I'm going to attempt to get this one down in one part instead of the usual two parts we're used to in the series. The first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to aging is types of wood. Now, most of you familiar in this craft are familiar with American oak. That is the standard for barrels all across America. There is an extremely high chance that your favorite whiskey or rum that you prefer is being aged with an American oak barrel. There is a toast level that all barrels go through. It's a one through five toast level scale. And most barrels, I would say, fall within the three, which is like basically just medium. There are definitely spirits out there that are run through a four or a five. You don't see much on the lighter side that I've seen anyways, but they do exist, I'm sure. However, that doesn't mean that you need to replicate what the standard is in distilling. If you're doing something such as a brandy, I'd really recommend maybe starting at a lighter oak toast level, maybe a one or two, just to see what would happen there and not take away too much flavor from your fruit when being put into that barrel. As far as American white oak goes, the flavor profiles are usually consistent with vanilla, caramel, chocolate, and then also you have that maple and everything else you kind of expect from oak in general. So you're getting a really well-rounded um, caramelly, more than anything in, in my opinion, sort of palette. An alternative to American white oak, which you won't see nearly as frequently, is French oak. French oak might very well be used more in Europe than it is in America. You just won't see it here very often from what I've seen. French oak tends to darken spirits more than American white oak does, just from my experience. This can work to a benefit, but a lot of the time, in my opinion, it, uh, it's almost like an overbearing when it gets that dark. Uh, French oak is known for just having a heavier chocolate note more than anything, uh, just from what I've tasted on it. And it's something that can work, but I think it's a little bit trickier to use, which is why I don't think it's so much of a standard in America. Your aging times will likely be shorter than it would in an American white oak because it gets dark so fast. And then those flavors coming over may be a little bit heavier than what you can expect from American white oak. These are again on a toast level. I haven't seen very many French oak aged spirits, but I believe most that I've seen are within that three as well, which is about medium. I think there's definitely some brandies and cognacs, things like that, that would benefit from that French oak. Maybe some rums would as well. Something you might see more frequently now at a craft distillery is going to be a used barrel, or we could also just call this a finishing barrel. These are barrels that have already been used to age something, could be anything, and then they're basically just sold back on the market. Uh, others take them and then use that flavor profile. All the tannins have soaked in with whatever was in there and uh, a distiller will use it a second time around to impart some of that flavor. These are definitely used in beer a lot as well, uh, but distillers, I'm seeing it more and more where they're being used. Sites like Midwest Barrel as well as Rocky Mountain Barrel Company, they have an extensive list of finishing barrels and some of these are pretty awesome. You may want a barrel that had maple syrup aged in it. You may want a barrel that had an apple brandy or maybe a Jamaican rum. And you can get that with a finishing barrel. Usually these are found in larger quantities as opposed to what you usually see here at Mile High Distilling with these small barrels, you know, 30, 50 gallon barrels. But if you have the volume, they are phenomenal. Maybe just get one, break it down and stick a few sticks in your smaller jars. But I think you can really put a nice finishing touch on beers as well as spirits and wine. There's a lot of finishing barrels out there that have had maybe your favorite spirit in them. They make Jameson, Crown Royal, Kraken barrels that could have had your favorite spirit aging in it before. So it could be a great way if you're actually interested in cloning your favorite recipe to try one of those out as well. And then last on the list I have here today are going to be specialty barrels. So these are special types of wood. These are hard to find. We have different species of oak that are very much not used. Um, it's very, very rare that you'd see it used in a distilled spirit, but things like Amburana wood, or maybe a Spanish cedar type of wood, uh, white ash maybe, there's a few very, very special barrels. Usually they have to be custom made. It's very hard to find them online. If it's something you're interested, go ahead, look up online your type of barrel that you're looking for. Maybe someone will make it for you. Maybe it's already available. 
the one thing I'd watch out for these is a lot of different species of wood can be somewhat hard to deal with. Amburana is a great case. It is extremely, extremely spicy. It's got cinnamon notes. Um, and it's, it's great if you can do it right, but if you get your consistencies wrong, if it ages for too long or too little, um, if proof is a little bit off, if your toast level is a little bit off, then that can impart too much and you're, it can turn your spirit bitter. It's something you'd really have to play with to get right. That's not the case for all these specialty woods, but there are strains out there that will cause that for you. Now let's go ahead and start talking about lengths of time for aging. How do we know how long to age? Well, the thing with that all is depending on the type of oak you have, depending on the size of barrel you have, depending on what's in there, those can all be contributions as to how long. What I'd really recommend above all else is what you should do as a distiller is go ahead, get your spirit in that barrel, get a sampler, turkey baster, and basically every few weeks to a month, I'd really recommend just every two weeks, you go ahead, pop that top off, take a sample, go ahead and get your desired flavor and your desired color. This is sort of your fail safe when it comes to barrels, but we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about standards first. The amount of time we spend aging can sometimes depend on the spirit. There are certain guidelines if we wish to follow them. For example, Kentucky bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, both have to be made in their state and then aged for at least two years. Most whiskeys are aged for at least two years, at least as far as professional distillery standards go. You'll find most whiskeys are aged for about four years or longer. In fact, a lot of whiskeys are aged for over four years because there's extra paperwork involved if it's under four years and some distilleries want to avoid that. Rums, as far as I know, don't really have a set time that they have to age for. I would say the standard is about two years as well. Brandies are pretty interesting because depending on the type of brandy, there are certain guidelines you have to follow in terms of aging. Typical brandies are again, two years. When you get into your VS brandies, they start getting three years minimum. VSOPs, VSOP brandies are going to be four years. And then we have some different Armagnac and Cognacs, which are a minimum of five years. They do proceed from there, but you kind of get the gist. The more high quality brandy that you're looking for, the longer it ages, which says something, doesn't it? Tequila is interesting because there are four different types of tequila. Uh, two are the only ones that matter here. They are Aneo and Reposado. Reposado is aged anywhere from two months to 12 months, so under a year. And then Anejos are going to be up to three years, I believe. Scotch whiskeys need to sit for a minimum of three years to be labeled as a scotch. And anything else you didn't hear on this list, as a general rule of thumb, we're going to stay two years. Keep in mind that the standards that we just provided you have to do with basically distillery size barrels. That can mean 15 gallons, but more often than not, it means 30 to 50 gallons. And sometimes it means bigger. If we're going off smaller barrels, let's say one and a half gallon barrels up to, I'd say five gallon barrels. And because of their incredible surface area, those standards can change quite a lot. Essentially with these, again, your best thing you can possibly do. It's just going to be continue to take those taste tests. There was an amazing spirit we made, our pineapple brandy, and I let it in there a month too long. If I had been taking my two weeks every taste test, I would have noticed it, would have pulled it out ahead of time, and it would have been even better. It still turned out great, but would have been better. My personal recommendation is if you have a new barrel, brand new, never been used, and it's within 1.5 or one gallon, let's say, to five gallon capacity, I would not let your spirit age longer than a year. Usually it's like two or three months for me, in fact. Again, we're talking about brand new barrels. So if you have a used barrel, which a lot of people don't realize they have a used barrel, if you bought your barrel for $70 on some site, chances are it's made in Mexico, and what they do there is they take big barrels that have been used, break it down into smaller barrels, refit staves, and then sell it as is. Those are used barrels, and those will likely take a little bit more longer to get the flavor. I'm talking about brand new barrels, literally made with fresh wood and delivered right to your door like we offer here on our American-made barrel side of things. For those, no longer than a year. And chances are, more likely than not, is even if you have that used barrel, if it's that small of a capacity, a year would overdo things. But that's why we taste test. That's why we do every two weeks, two a month, but really two weeks. 
and just keep on sampling. Let's go ahead and talk more about used barrels. We did talk about used barrels in smaller capacity in that last section. For this section, what we're talking about here is like, you know, 10, 15, 50 gallon used barrels. Obviously, because these are used, there are less tannins. Some have been absorbed already. And so we have more aging time to do. The reality is, is two years, the minimum aging time, let's say minimum, is maybe good for a used barrel. Again, it depends on size and just waiting that time out, seeing how things taste and taking taste tests where we can. It also comes down to taste because keep in mind, not everyone likes a super strong, super caramelly type whiskey, right? So you might find in two years that even though it's doled out on flavor from your typical whiskey or rum, you might like what it's imparted and that's really all you wanted. I would say for used barrels in the capacity we're talking about, I'd go for a minimum of two years, take it from there with like 50% jumps in time. So let's go three years, check again, you know, proceed from there. Another thing we need to talk about here is over oaking because that can happen. I would say it's more prominent in an oak aging alternative like the ones up here. We will talk about those later, but it can still happen in a barrel. In fact, I just gave you a good explanation. Almost did it with my pineapple brandy. Try to be aware of that over oaking. That's why we take our taste test. There's not much to mention on the subject. If it happens, it's pretty much ruined and there's really not a lot you can do to fix that spirit. So again, follow the rules of thumb, try to taste test and you shouldn't really ever come into this problem. That's a short section, but uh, just wanted to talk on over oaking. We're gonna proceed with talking a little bit more about angel share and the devil's cut. Angel share is going to be basically evaporation that happens in the barrel, giving some up to the angels, we call it. The bung that you find on barrels, as well as a lot of people have spigots in their barrels, this is a lot of the cause of the angel share. This is due to evaporation. We all know how evaporation works. It's essentially just liquid that is in some way heated, and then it turns into a gas. It's really impossible to avoid in no matter the climate you're at. Distilleries report, you know, two to 5% loss per year for their angel share, which isn't a whole lot, but over you know the course of many years, it can begin to be something impactful. I do feel like in smaller barrels, this is less of a percentage, and that's usually because you're not aging for super long in a smaller barrel. Some distilleries may combat the angel share by adding freshly distilled whiskey into their already maturing whiskey. They may have lost 15% of their total volume in their barrel. They'll go ahead and fill that in with fresh whiskey and then proceed to age from there. If you have the volume to continue to do that, by all means do. Otherwise, continue to have the angels take their share. Just keep it, you know, the original batch in there and uh, take the volume you can out of it when it's done aging. But it is recommended to keep the barrel completely full at all times for a proper aging. A recent term you may have heard is going to be the devil's cut. Most of you will probably know this from Jim Beam's devil's cut whiskey. And essentially what this means is when you empty a barrel, you're never gonna get 100% of what you put in. There's a lot of that whiskey that's going to basically just absorb in the wood of the barrel. It's a porous material, wood, and it's going to get some of that. I don't quite know this full process on how to do this, but essentially the devil's cut is everything absorbed in that barrel, extracted and put into a bottle. Now, as far as that angel share goes, our climate does matter. Here in Colorado, it's extremely dry and I notice more is taken out and it makes sense. It's evaporation. The warmer things get, the more turns into a gas. There are distillers out there that will actually find different climates to age in and they say it imparts different flavors. Jefferson's Ocean is a great example of this. They put a barrel out on the sea and basically just let it age over sea. It's supposed to impart a lot of, you know, different salt water type notes and things like that. And then they offer different lines like Jefferson's Ocean's Tropic, where they brought it into a tropic climate. There's definitely whiskeys out there as well that are sort of just aged in like a desert. So this isn't always a bad thing. I would say for the average person, I don't think these notes would fully be imparted. You wouldn't be able to tell which climate a barrel was aged in simply from just the taste. As far as I'm concerned, I know I wouldn't, but it's a very cool experiment. And I think for the connoisseurs out there, this could be something that you could experiment with. There's a chance that maybe barrels aren't your thing. It is the traditional way, but they do cost a fair amount of money. 
And some people are worried that they'll put all this time and effort into getting their barrel ready, put it all in, and then it turns out not as good as they thought. So there are oaking alternatives where we can kind of test out different toast levels, different types of wood, and experiment from there. First one on our list is going to be oak spirals. These are phenomenal. This is usually what I use for aging. These different slats all throughout this spiral are going to be really incredulous for our surface area. We're gonna be able to age extremely fast with this spiral design, as well as it's a decent amount for a cheap price. The packet you see here can age up to six gallons worth of beer or spirits, and it's gonna cost you roughly about 15. $15 and you can age and experiment with. These are really great. They come in a variety of different toast levels as well as woods. So aside from that, we can go a classic route with oak chips. Now a little bit goes a long way. These will by far be the best bang for your buck if you're aging large quantities. This one pound bag runs about $8. Most people do like a handful to two handfuls per gallon. Um, this is going to last you quite a long time. This is a light toast, which is all we offer here at Mile High. I believe there are suppliers out there that get a lot of larger quantities of this stuff in, and so they're able to basically special order different toast levels. They might have your medium or your dark, but these work extremely well. They're fun to play around with, and you can put them directly into your oven or smoker or something like that and toast them further as well. So it's fun to do that. And we also just have oak sticks. So these are much in the same vein as our spirals. It's just gonna be that regular stick, no slots or anything like that. And this will age, I'd say about two quarts. They may do less compared to spirals, but they do run cheaper, obviously. And then also, at least for the ones here at Mile High Distilling, this is like as fresh wood as it gets. This is from like a single dude who just cuts oak for a living. Um, this is very fresh wood. He's a very good guy and he's wanting to experiment with different types of wood So look out for these in the future. We're gonna have an apple wood. We're gonna have a cherry wood We're gonna have a few different pretty cool strains of, of wood with these sticks involved Last on my list is just gonna be swish bags. So I don't have any of these available um, I would say out of oak alternative methods. It's probably the least common what they are, are basically just a bunch of wood shavings um, they are usually packaged and almost wet, so they're they're not everyone's favorite choice. They kind of look like that uh, that chew that you put in your mouth, you know. But it is something you can do. And in that same vein, something I don't have here that's possible are oak cubes. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the newest installment of our Distilling 101 series. Hopefully, you learned a thing or two about aging. Maybe I gave you some good ideas for different ways you can age or different toast levels that you can age with. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to also subscribe to our channel. I promise it's not just always me sitting here on a desk. We get out in the field, we distill, we do some funky recipes, we do some cool stuff. So be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Go ahead and look down below in the description. You're gonna see all the rest of our social media. Be sure to subscribe to that as well. We got some kicking stuff as well there. And guys, look further down below and you're gonna see the comment section. Go ahead and write your own comment. Let me know how you enjoyed this video and maybe you have some tips on aging. I really want to make these videos to where the comment section is full of the community getting together, sharing feedback on their experiences with the certain topic and everything like that. So if you have anything you'd like to share on aging, go down below in the comments and share it, okay? I appreciate you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.